Okay, hello comrades. Thank you for joining us. Today, uh, Matthew Jones is looking at the new labor left in the 1960s and I think mainly the 1970s, uh, Tony Benn and the alternative economic strategy. Um, thank you, Matthew, for stepping in because I think the original speaker couldn't make it. So thank you, Matthew. Fire away. Hi, comrades. Thanks for uh, taking, uh, being uh, participating in this in this call. Uh, it's nice to see everybody again, um, and uh, everybody giving greetings and so on. Um, yeah, what I want to uh, try and do um, this this in this call really is to look at the sixties and seventies, uh, and and the sort of the developments, obviously, of a of a particular period. Um, you know, uh, uh, which was obviously a, a period in which you had a huge militancy of the working class itself um probably well certainly the most the the, the, the greatest uh, militancy uh, in the post-war period in those in those two decades um allied with um obviously the move uh, of the of the ruling class away from the the post-war uh settlement and, and towards um you know various more punitive act attitudes towards the working class and uh, uh instruments like monetarism which was of course first implemented by the Labour Party and not Thatcher um, and um, towards uh, away from in particular of course in Britain of course away from from uh, production and industrial capitalism towards towards finance capital which of course is uh, and Brit Britain is the oldest capitalist country in the world has gone further down that road than, than anywhere else uh, and you can clearly see how you know the, the, the the, the impact of, of, of you know, Thatcher's deliberate closure of much of, of, of British industry, which I mean, still still leaves its mark, as we can see. And I think really looking at um, you know say the development of, of 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 the Labour Party, but also of um, of the left, you know, and, and how that in some ways diverged. I mean, if you look at the at the early in, in the early part of the 60s, uh, obviously, you still had um, the prescriptions, um, you still had, you know, of the, of the left, um, but you had this, you did have this, this, this um, arm wrestling, if you like, between the left and right, particularly through the, uh, through the Parliamentary Labour Party, um, which I mean, it was quite strange, I think, looking at it, because obviously, a lot of this was you know, because of the nature of the thing was fought out among the MPs, whereas the fact that the, the, the bulk of people, you know, the Labour Party was still quite a large, it was a large organisation, much larger than it is today, um, you know, we're, we're sort of off, in some ways, off stage, because they, you know, while they could pass motions, they, in many cases, they're ignored. If we look at the, the interesting thing, of course, you look at the start of the 60s, is, 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 is really the, the, you know, two things happen. One, that in, in, the, in the 1960 con conference of the Labour Party, um, in uh, in Scarborough, um, the left, uh, led by the unions, actually the Transport General Union, which at that point, of course, had switched away from from its its traditional right wing role under under Bevin, not Bevan, Bevin, Ernest Ernest Bevin, who was extremely right wing, and of course, you know, very much a, a follower of the Americans and so on, uh, to you know, to, to now led by Frank Cousins. Uh, and and in fact the engineering union and again the engineering union itself um, of course had you know became more right wing particularly uh, you know from the, 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 the in in the late seventies and the, those of us who were around at the time remember you know the the, the, the AU and its success, successors were always seen as the right uh, and were in fact whereas at that point of course under under Hugh Scanlon of course it was relatively left wing and the, the, the thing was that the nineteen sixty conference. Uh, the two unions, the, the AEU, the engineers and the Transport General, moved motions in favour of nuclear disarmament, both of which were passed narrowly. Uh, of course, both of which were then dis probably disavowed by, by the leadership of the Labour Party under the Gates School, as you might expect. You know, any, any, anything as, as, as incendiary and left wing as that, you know, uh, having, you know, obviously, the, as we covered previously, the, the, the arm wrestling in the, in the 50s. Um, you know that you then got um, also, of course, a challenge from from um, from from um, Harold Wilson. Now, Harold Wilson, of course, uh, to to against Gate School. Of course, Gate School, of course, was the, the, the real hard right of the, of the Labour Party. Um, uh, whereas Harold Wilson, of course, was was seen as a, as as 
as sort of the standard bearer of the left, but but always known as as, as fairly much an opportunist. Which he, uh, he undoubtedly was. I mean, he was known, known for switching positions uh, on a relatively regular basis. However, he challenged. He unsuccessfully challenged Gates with leadership, uh, and he, you know, uh, subsequently, of course, became leader when Gates will die, after Gates will die. He also challenged, of course, the, the uh, George Brown for deputy and, 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 and found in that challenge as well. Uh, so you could see there was, you know, there was clearly a split and people were, were, you know, there was certainly an amount of reluctance on Wilson's part to do it, but there was certainly also, of course, a, a force of people you know, urging him to, to, to get on and, and challenge these the the, 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 the the right and the Labour Party. Um same time you know you you also had the rise of the um uh, of CND as we know I mean you know, some people I don't know there may be people still here uh, on the call who who remember the Aldermaston marches it's, you know, it's before I was alive in fact but you know these this was a mass this was a, a huge mass movement the Aldermaston march with a hundred over hundred thousand people even even by official official uh, reckoning um and a big cnd movement and in fact of course uh, as a result this this broke into into parliament when when michael foot and four of the La labor mps including sydney Silverman, refused to vote for the defense estimate 1961. um i mean this was you know a major thing i mean obviously the position wasn't as good as the old the old uh, SPD in Germany, who had the position that they would never vote for any defence spending, not a man, not a penny, was their was their, their slogan. And the, this is why, you know, obviously when it came to 1914, you know, that 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 political collapse, it was such a shock because they 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 steadfastly refused for decades to 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 uh, um, uh, you know vote for any any military expenditure whatsoever. Um, so. But they refused, you know, say these five MPs refused to vote for the defence estimates on the grounds they were in favour of nuclear disarmament. Uh, they were then suspended from the local. They had witness withdrawn for over two years from March 1961 until, until May 1963. Um, which is, I mean, it, you know, it's quite, quite extraordinary. If, you know, so obviously there's a, there's a history of, of this and pe people being, you know, uh, you know able to, 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 to take on the, um, the, 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 the Labour Party in, in, in that way. Um, and of course, I mean, obviously, as we've seen previously, people, people being expelled, coming back and becoming leaders of, of the you know, various sections or, or even the Labour Party itself. Um, as you know, obviously, as you know, Foot became leader in, in, in the 80s. So, um, what you also had, of course, was the, uh, the perpetual inability, and interestingly enough, the perpetual inability of the Labour Party itself. Uh, and this, I think, this is part of its of its evolution um, to run a, to to ever run a successfully run a youth movement. Um, in in nineteen in, in nine fifty five, it had actually set it had actually wound up the Labour League Labor League of Youth, which was its historic um, youth movement, and it tried to start um, a thing which became what was called the the, the Young Socialists in nineteen sixty. Um, interestingly enough, um, it. Uh, I mean, this was all, almost uh, totally um, a bureaucratic farce in many ways. I mean, it was a seen sort of an account of a meeting you know, because the, basically the Labour Party attempt basically imposed the constitution on this organisation and, and said, "Well, you know, here's your parameters, and you must not step beyond them," um, which didn't go down very well at all. Um, there was a, there's a, a sort of account of a meeting actually one of the one of the branches being set up in London in which there were quite a lot of about fifty odd um, young members uh, and two guys from London region and the guys from London region said, "Here's your constitution. If you don't vote for it, we'll shut you down." So, uh, so two people voted in favour. One person voted against. Somebody else abstained, <laughs> which is the way to treat these people. Anyway, so the problem is that, of course, then the Labour Party set up YS and, and, and almost immediately lost control of it. Um, uh, and in fact, the the, the 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 real force, of course, was the was um, a thing called Keep Left, which was run by 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 the Socialist Labour League, um, and uh, through through I think uh, one of the a couple of the main of the branches in London. Um, the thing is, on the ground, of course, the Young Socialist was remarkably successful because it, what it did was it was able to get in at the point at which mu the music 
uh, you know, the, the taste for, for popular music was taken off, uh, but before it became a big business. So in fact, what they did was actually set up uh, essentially music clubs all over the country, and they got huge, huge numbers of, of, of youth involved in that. Um, you know, when friends of mine actually why us you, you, music clubs, um, you know, and 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 this was you know, tremendously popular, involved a lot of people. The problem is, of course, they couldn't again. I mean, the problem is they couldn't control it. Um, so actually, what happened in the end, of course, is they 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 threw everybody out again in 1964. Um, they actually threw out their own use, use of the war, particularly, of course, keep left, uh, you, know, uh, you know, of course, the Trotskyist new, uh, youth newspaper, um, but which, which uh, by that time, of course, constituted the, the bulk of the, uh, of the organisation, thus, thus rendering the Labour Party sans another youth organisation in a matter of, I think, three or four years. Um, so this was, I mean, this was, this was um, an, you know, an interesting um, development in those terms. Um, I think uh, also the other thing, of course, is the evolution, as I say, the evolution of the left itself uh, in, those, in those terms, um, because what you got was what was coming out, of course, and you say still under the conditions in which, which left organisation were prescribed, and the prescription was still in operation until um, the early 70s. Uh, you know, a series of organisations which, which actually started off in the, in, in the Labour Party and became very significant. The first of which, of course, was the SLO, which had left the Socialist Labour League, which had actually left the Labour Party itself, but then took it took the Labour Party's youth group. The second of which was uh, was a, a, an organisation around that uh, under Tony Cliff, which at the time was called Young Guard and then became eventually became the late 60s uh, International Socialist and, and, and drifted out of the Labour Party. Uh, didn't actually take, ever take a decision to leave the Labour Party, but actually drifted out. The third, of course, was was uh, was the uh, uh, eventually a, 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 a small publication called Militant, um, uh, produced by by Ted Grant and a few of his co of his comrades, which started in the mid sixties um, and persisted in the Labour Party for a further uh, you know the best part of another thirty years or, or you know, no, 20, a quarter of a century. Um, so you had the, the origins of all this in, in, in those terms. At the same time, I think the other thing, of course, is was important was was the growth of, of the militancy of the of the working class. Um, and I mean, from a condition in which we, we, you know you were looking at um, a position where um, people were actually writing books saying, "Well, does the working class still exist? Have all these people, all these workers, become middle class?" Um, you know, and then and then this explosion, uh, you, know, uh, you know, from from particularly from the, uh, the, 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 the you know the early in the middle sixties onwards, um, and that particularly of course uh, of, of um, against not not merely the, the the employers but actually against the unions themselves because much of this action was unofficial, uh, not condoned or or, or 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 voted through by the unions, but actually. Uh, Done on the basis of the work. Um, so you can see that in terms of, 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 of obviously in the world terms in which, um, you know, this was, a, if you like, a, a British part of, of a world phenomenon, which was quite mild. I mean, the, 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 uh, the government of Britain never fled the country like de Gaulle in 68. Uh, and and no cities were burned down, as in uh, or, you know where, where they lost control, like in Detroit or or, um, or or some of the other some of the places in the U.S. Um, you know, I mean, it, 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 it was it, it was quite mild. And if you look at you know, or, or in fact, you know, where countries weren't you know, invaded, like like say the Prague Spring or whatever else. So in in those terms, you can say it was quite quite a mild case in the British, um, but it was it was. Um, you know, a, a significant movement, and it involved a lot of um, people and a lot of militancy, um, and it developed a politics in itself, which the thing is, the interesting thing, of course, is this politics tended to move away from the Labour Party, not, not least because the Labour Party itself was, was quite, you know, certainly from the, 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 um, the parliamentary Labour Party was, was distinctly antagonistic. Um, if you look at the, well, you know, obviously the, 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 the Tories 
um, lost government in, 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 in 64. Wilson, of course, had succeeded Gates after his, you know, his efforts in the early 60s, he succeeded Gates uh, and came into government in 64. Then won another election with a, a huge majority in 66. Um, you know, on a, on a basis of, you know, uh, running a, a, a sort of technocratic government, which is, just, you know, involved a whole series of the left, like like, like Ben and, and, and so on. Uh, Michael Foot really stayed out, I think, until, until, the, until the, the governments of the 70s, because of his previous um, antagonisms with chunks of the, of the, the PLP over, over a year disarmament. Um, but this government, what it what it did do, of course, was to was to produce a thing called uh, a, a paper called in, in Place of Strife in, in, in 1969, uh, which was an effort to to basically to, to prevent or control uh, unofficial union action. Um, and of course, it failed because there was huge antagonism both from the unit, from the unions. Uh, and and within, uh, even within the PLP itself, and, and actually the, the, not all of the PLP actually voted for the thing. Um, you know, Barbara Castle's uh, efforts to, 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 to get this through, there was a, actually a very substantial split. You know, 60 old Labour and Peace voted against it. Uh, and in fact, all they got in the end was a, 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 a having negotiated and just, uh, under, from an offer from from the from from Jack James of the team of the TNG and and Hugh Scanlon of the engineers, uh, that the, the the unions pledged to attempt to control um, uh, unofficial action, which of course they weren't particularly successful in doing for the period. Um, the interesting thing was actually they did actually give a series of of of, of um, uh, statistics about strike action as they were produced. First part of the whole bit on, on in place of strife, and what it showed actually was, of course, that you had this huge ramp up in, in unofficial trade union action, um, in, in everywhere apart from in in in, in mine, because the NUM, of course, at that point was was pretty right wing, um, and, and 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 of course uh, mining, of course, was was you know, being essentially uh, in, in a period of managed decline. So you didn't have the kind of battles you'd had, um, you know, say in the 20s and 30s, um, in the, you know, when not mining was nationalised in 48, you had about 3,000 pits. And then course, what they were trying to do was rationalise all this lot and, and get it down to, to uh, you know, what, what they call, you know, the super pits and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, and the union itself was run by the right wing. What what did what did happen though immediately actually in 1969 interestingly enough as a sort of preface for the whole mining disputes of the 70s was a service workers strike of 69 70 um, which actually blindsided everybody including the NUM because the NUM if you, uh, anybody ever dealt with, 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 with the NUM of course was always run by by face workers the guys who actually got the coal. Um, the organisation was overwhelmingly based on the ground. The guys on the surface um, felt themselves completely neglected, not only by the employers, but also by the union. Um, and of course, my, by this point, of course, mining wages were pretty awful. I mean, terrible, like, even by comparison to average wages. And the surface workers, of course, had the worst end of that. So but the thing was, of course, that there was only a traditional mine that nobody would cross a picket. And so all surface workers did was go around picking out their own pits and then the next door pits and so on. And this went round and round and round, particularly in the auction. And was sort of the, 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 the start, uh, you know, if you like, the, the flash of lightning before, before the biggest disputes of 72, 70 and 73. Um, so the thing was, of course, obviously then, you know, having, having the Labour Party then having, to, again, having to try and, had tried to, 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 to um, really to, to bring British industry, you know, it was almost the last effort to try and, uh, as we, I think we dealt with in the previous series in terms of the Labour Party bringing, uh, rationalising British industry, creating British Leyland, creating all this, an effort to try and bring this, almost the last, the last gasp of that, you know, in, in, in line with what had been done actually previously by Harold Macmillan, the fact that Harold Macmillan created, you know, um, things like like Raven's Craig in, and, and, and Linwood in the, in the west of Scotland, you know, huge, huge um, industrial plants, you know, extraordinarily for talk. Um, you know, you know, so so that the, there was 
but then of course they lost in 1970 uh, against all against opinion polls against you know everybody's expectation um wilson lost in 1970 uh and and, and, and Heath came in the thing was of course that this, of course, then wrapped everything up because the Tories then promptly attempted to frontally take on the unions um, and lost um, quite, you know, all over the place and huge, huge battles over the over the the, 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 the docks over the um, you know the infamous Midland coal storage when they had to fish in to to get people out to fish in the official solicitor to quote they found the official solicitor so they could fish people out of jail for, to prevent them being what was building up to the general strike um there's the, you know, the the massive uh 72 minor strike which again threatened to you know what, what, when you what, what happened of course was that um um you know, the whole business in terms of uh, the appeal to the engineering unions in in in, in Birmingham, the sort of gate, and the fact that you don't have solidarity action. You know, many tens of thousands of engineers just walked out of, out, out of work and, and 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 essentially won the strike and effectively destroyed the Keith government in 1972. Sort of day. Um, all of this took place, if you like. Well, it did take place outside of the Labour Party. I mean, this is this is the thing. You know. Um, and you had, as I say, and particularly the particular political organisation which which benefited really, um, you know, that, that, that came in and grew hugely from this was 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 Cliffs uh, International Socialists, uh, who recruit hugely the, the, from the trade unions and managed to build a network of people, you know, across most of the major workplaces in, in Britain. Um, you know, an it was a, an extraordinarily successful. Um, Effort on those in those terms, I and mean, politically running at a very minimal basis, if you like. I mean, Cliff, of course, and then again, a convinced political opportunist, um, and wouldn't politically challenge anybody or, or attempt to raise political level or whatever else. However, it, it it did it did change things quite substantially. But the problem was, of course, that then you you also came down to this question: Well, you know, what politically was going to happen, and this. You know, when you when you saw you know the miners you know now under the leadership of Arthur Scarborough, of course, was success uh, based on the, on the success of sort of gain, uh, which was led led by by Arthur Scarborough, um, uh, and then of course the finally finishing off um, Heath's government in in the seventy three strike. The key question was, okay, well, what is the political implication of this? I mean, you've actually you know did you destroyed a Tory government? You know what what happens next and there's an infamous article actually from um from arthur scargill in the morning star uh which i'm probably drag out some of which he is he actually said um well we don't actually care who's in the government as long as they pay us the money we're after um you know which is is he, he, he he's a staggering under the conditions of course there's a staggering position to take um, you know, given the, the, the questions which are, are um, you know, in train, um, you know, for, for the working class, um, and, you know, which anybody with any, any real political sense can see. Um, you know, and, 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 okay, the miners getting paid was, was one question, but there were, you know, numerous, you know, more profound ones, like, you know, which were again posed by Heath himself. Well, who who, who governs uh, was his slogan in in, in the in the, the 70, 74 election, the, the first one. Uh, and of course, the answer not you, mate. Um, he lost, and Wilson, of course, was back in, although it, with a minority government in in February, and only with a with a very very tiny minority in in the next one in, in October. I think in one, the majority was only three. So this then posed the question, okay, I mean, given, uh, given also a position of, a, of an economic crisis, which had been brought on obviously by, by, by numerous factors, I mean, you know, most notably the, the um, uh, OPEC um, oil uh, dispute and the fact that, that our oil prices have been wrapped up into multiples of what they were, um, that, uh, or, you know, uh, a huge rate of, of inflation, of course, and of course, a, a you know the, the defeat of the uh, of of the US in, in Vietnam, um, you know, on a world scale, which is a huge huge question. Um, at the same time, obviously, the the, the capitalist class had a 
you know, as as part of the whole business of um, the uh, moving away from industrial capitalism, it had abandoned the Bretton Woods. The Bretton Woods Agreement was abandoned in, in 71. Uh, and really then you were seeing, okay, well, what was the, what was the implications of that? Um, and the implications of that really was, you know, was again, again against a, you know, on a, on a Labour Party in, in government. Although, of course, with a, with a, with a, a standard minority, standard majority. The, the thing is, of course, I think that for me, um, you know, obviously, as we know, uh, Wilson um, then resigned. And the question is, OK, and, and was then succeeded, of course, in this by... Uh, by Jim Callaghan, who was of the was of the hard right, um, you know, back going back to Gatesville um, again, um, and the question was, uh, you know, and there, there's all this sort of thing. Well, you know, did he just resign because he wasn't well, or did he resign because uh, you know there was a uh, some political reason? And uh, you, know, you would suspect. I mean, haven't seen what what's come out since. Obviously, about all the plots and so on and so forth against Wilson, you'd have to suspect that it wasn't because he was ill. Um, however, the, the question for the Labour Party then, okay, was, was, was to, as far as, as Callaghan and Healy were concerned, was actually to then enforce the, 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 the um, requirements of um, the ruling class. There was no, there was no messing about with this. Um, you know, Healy started the process of cuts. It, 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 in, in, in his in his budget, as soon as he came in as, as chancellor uh, in in seventy six, um, they tried to enforce um, the the uh, the incomes policy in, with agreement with with the trade union um, with the trade union bureaucracy uh, in order to to essentially reduce real wages, um, and there was of course a tremendous resentment of this, as you would expect. Um, interestingly enough, I mean, really, the 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 the, the left, uh, of course, was 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 part of the left in the Labour Party, certainly in the PLP, the likes of, of particularly, obviously, uh, uh, Tony Benn and and Michael Foot uh, and Pete Shaw, and so on, were all members of that of that government, uh, and of course, were carried out those those, those policies. Um, the argument, of course, was then around, um, you know, was there an alternative? Um, and the interesting, I think, if you look at, if you look at the likes of, if you look at Tony Bannerman in his, in his career, I mean, he does come from, um, and, and, you know, to an extent, foot as well, but, but, but Ben in particular, because I think Ben, ben really comes from a sort of more sort of um, religious nonconformist um, tradition. Um, you know, uh, and, People say, you know, that the, there's more Methodism in the Labour Party than there is Marx. And certainly that's the case in, 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 with, with Tony Benn. I mean, he, you know, uh, as he uh, admitted, he hadn't actually read any Marx until he was in his 50s. Um, so really then, you, you, you know, it was then a question, OK, well, what... The, it was then a question of, well, what, 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 what is the alternative? And this really came out, um, you know, around both the opposition to to the common market. As we know, the the, the, the whole bit with the, uh, the the common market referendum in 1975, which is interesting, an interesting piece because obviously Wilson allowed um, the the Labour Party to essentially split on the question, and and Ben and other, and many and much of the and much of the left campaigned against. Um, in fact, I think virtually all of the Labour left campaigned against, whereas, of course, um, you know, the leadership and the right wing campaign campaigned for. Um, so, I mean, in these terms, you know, you had this 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 um, question. Well, OK, um, the the point was then that what was the alternative to to Healy's programme? Um, and Healy essentially um, was was the was the was the original architect of of the whole monetarist thing? <coughs> Excuse me, the the emphasis on the on the money money supply, which I mean, again is 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 basically a, a fairly thinly disguised attack on the working class, um, you know, but essentially 
you know, the notion of, well, okay, inflation, uh, and therefore the, the, the real thing that you're interested in is, is actually, is there a right, is there any move, move to, to increase wages? Which is actually what has uh, been recovering now, because actually what's happening now is the, the Bank of England, if people know it's the Bank of England say, well, we don't need to raise um, interest rates because, well, the price of commodities is going up and the price of things in the shops are going up, but wages are not going up and nobody's, nobody's managing to force up wages. So we don't need to raise interest rates because we don't need to squeeze the workers. Um, you know, so it's not, it's not overly heavily disguised. Um, so what, what, what was then devised was this thing called the alternative economic strategy, which really um, was driven by, by, by the Communist Party. Um, uh, which has always had a huge influence in in in, in the Labour Party. Um, I mean, if you come from if you come from where I come, here, here, if you live here in Glasgow, of course, it, 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 the, the, the Communist Party, of course, has a huge influence on all bits of the Labour Party. Even the right wing, um, basically, is, is has a sort of sound flow to it. Um, you know, and, and in fact, actually, much of the some of the right wing in, 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 in this area are actually ex-members of this thing, of the C P. Although that's not that's not peculiar. I mean, Peter Mendelssohn was an ex-member of the C P. Um, so, the the point was that the C P. Then, then came out with this idea, it's particularly driven by them, the alternative economic strategy, which they issued as a as a pamphlet, um, particularly the, 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 the sort of real basic one was, was issued by as a pamphlet by the union TASS um, which was a white collar um, engineering union uh, which was dominated by the communist party um, and essentially what it was was, was a program for for autarky i.e britain standing alone um, you know again for import controls for you know the, the maintenance of, of controls on currency um, for price controls on firms for, for obviously nationalization um, against the common market. Interestingly enough, I mean, you know, the thing is, of course, um, it, 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 it's almost, well, it is the last gasp of that, that because obviously now you have a position where, where um, um, there, is no, there is no production which is not internationalized. I mean, you, you simply can't run um, or propose an autarkic system these days because Basically, for the actual production of just about everything is now run across borders of all sorts, um, which is, I mean, you know, one of the main issues with with Brexit, of course, is, it, is to run, is to try and run these these, these complicated systems with uh, with a strange border in the middle, uh, which is being interfered with by all kinds of odd, odd politicians. Um, so, and then you know, also including a, a reduction in military expenditure, and the, the issue of you know, can they redistribute um, redistribute incomes and, and so on. Um, obviously, this this was inadequate. You know, this really quite. I mean, it, it, it goes into um, you know really what happened after um, the Wilson government. And the thing is, obviously, when we had the Wilson government, um, oh sorry, the, the Wilson and the Callaghan government. And Cal the, the, the later Callaghan government, which, which of course was, was the, the, the last few years of the 1970s, uh, there was tremendous resentment. Uh, and you could see, I mean, it, it, it was slowly collapsing uh, under, its own, under its own weight. Um, and, and of course, there was, you know, there was notions of going to, 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 to have an election in 1978, which they, they, they obviously pulled out of. And finally, they went in, 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 in May. Um, 1979 and lost um, substantially to, to Thatcher, which was no great surprise. But then, of course, obviously there was this tremendous reaction, particularly within the Labour Party itself, uh, and, and, and of course a wider layer. Actually, I mean, it was the first the first time you actually had a, a, a you know a return into the Labour Party, if you like, or, or return to the Labour Party by people who were outside of it. Uh, you know, after the, the whole sort of upsurge of, 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 of militancy and so on um, in the 60s and 70s, there was then this whole question, well, OK, so you, you go back to the question of, you know, politically, what's your alternative? Uh, and the question that, 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 that was always posed within the Labour Party uh, after that, that government fell was, well, we, we, we ain't going to do that again. Never, not, we're not having that again. 
um, you know, there must be something, something else different. We mustn't have a Labour government which is basically enforcing these, uh, you know, terrible uh, monetarist uh, prescriptions, um, cuts, uh, attempts to, you know, enforce an, you know, essentially to squeeze wages and so on, and alienate the basic supporters of the, of the Labour Party. And this is really the the the, the, um, uh, the 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 platform for the great struggles of the of the nineteen eighties. So I will I will leave it there and uh, ask people to to put in contributions and questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Matthew. Excellent. We've got one person with a hand up. Comrades, if you do have questions or comments, please raise hand. Click on the button at the bottom of your screen. If you can't find the button, you can also put your question in the Q and A, and I'll try and bring you in this way. Thank you very much, Matthew. Enjoyed that. Okay, first person is Tony. Please switch on your camera. And then Marie. Okay, there's Tony. You're muted, Tony. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you for that, Matthew. Uh, it's a tour through my... Uh, the early years of my life, in a sense. So uh, I remember a lot of it quite clearly. And there were quite exciting times when uh, the Dockers were locked up in uh, Pentonville jail after the uh, picketing out of the Midland cold storage. And uh, the Court of Appeal heard the case in record time. Uh, it was Sir John Donaldson that, uh, if you remember, the National Industrial Relations Court, which had jailed them. Uh, Donaldson eventually went to the Court of Appeal and uh, Denning overturned it, Denning being a particularly reactionary judge, overturned the decision in order to find a pretext uh, for thwarting or not having to face a general strike. Months later, the House of Lords then overturned the Court of Appeal, but that's how these things work. Uh, I mean, I have a number of observations. I mean, in place of strife, of course, when the uh, Labour government started to turn against the trade unions in a big way. It was ironically Jim Callaghan who opposed it. Callaghan, of course, coming from the right wing of the trade union. I think it was the Inland Revenue Inspectors. Uh, he'd been part of that union. Uh, but yes, I mean, there was a, a very considerable Labour movement opposition. Of course, Barbara Castle, who was the darling of the Bevanites, was the person who had pioneered it. I mean, that was the uh, the irony in the sense. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I remember the miners strike. I mean, the miners were under Joe Gormley, uh, who was a right wing leader, and then Lawrence Daly, who was on the left. And But that gave birth to Arthur Scargill. And I can, I can remember the Salty Coke Depot, uh, which was the pivotal, uh, if you like, incident in the strike. Uh, where the miners had been beaten around for two days or so, and then the engineers marched in force and the police were forced to uh, close the massive coke uh, depot that there was there. And that really spelt uh, the, the victory of the miners. So I say they were, they were exciting times. I, I have one or two things uh, to query. IS, whether it, I mean, I was in IS, from about 1972 until I was expelled in 72, 73. My recollection was that yes, it certainly recruited amongst the working class, but I wouldn't say it was a massive recruitment. I mean, uh, I know, because I was in Liverpool, uh, we barely had any dockers in, in the group. It was the Communist Party uh, controlled the shop stewards committee there, but. IS had virtually no implantation, as far as I can recall. It had individual workers scattered around, but in the main plants, in the main centres of struggle, it had a very loose uh, following indeed. Uh, Peter Shaw, you mentioned, he was actually of the right, not the left. Uh, you gave that impression, but I think the main, uh, the main uh, mistake of the left during that period, and uh, I think it has come to rebound with Brexit, was the the decision to uh, oppose the uh, the EEC to call for the withdrawal from the EEC in the referendum. That was a nationalist uh, uh, 
perspective rather than any socialist one. We had the picture of Tony Benn on the same platform as Enoch Powell, which was a ghastly mistake uh, in every way at all. And by losing that uh, that uh, referendum, which the, uh, the left and the Labour Party did, it then gave Wilson the chance to uh, counter-attack. And Tony Benn was immediately moved uh, from the Department of Trade and Industry to the Department of Energy. And Eric Varley, who was an old right winger, took his place instead at the DTI. So that was the end to uh, any thoughts of implementing an alternative economic strategy. But I think the main lesson is that we've had, in a sense, the left took off in the Labour Party in terms of calling for democracy and uh, the election of the leader, etc. after the 79 election. And that left rose on the basis of the mass working class struggles that had taken place in the 1970s. And you have to contrast that with the rise of Corbyn and Corbynism uh, in 2015, where there was an absence of class struggle. And I think that was one of the major significant factors in the defeat of the Corbyn project. So I I'll leave it there, but thank you for a very interesting uh, tour de force, as it were. Thanks, Tony. Interesting. Um, Marie, please. Hello. Can you see me? Yep. Can you see me? <laughs> um, yes, uh, thank you, Matthew, for um standing in and and giving your talk uh, which is important which shows um, that you have lived also through all this um i think that uh, what we have looked at what you have looked at is in the end the economic situation very much the economic situation and of course it's the root of everything else uh, from the economy there there comes a consciousness of what is to be done and therefore the economy cannot be replaced and can, it cannot be replaced our concern uh, to make changes and to make proposals like nationalization and so on. But it seems to me that a, a, a little bit more can be said about Tony Benn, because already in, 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 90, in the 70s, uh, he, he had shifted to the left quite a lot. And he attributed this political shift to his experience as a cabinet minister in the 1964-70 Labour government. Ben ascribed his move to the left to four reasons. So the first was how the civil service can frustrate, frustrate the policies and decisions of popular, popular elected governments. The second, he said, the centralized nature of the Labour Party, which allowed the leader to run the party almost as if it were his personal possession. The third, he said, the power of the industrialists and bankers, with the bankers, as you said, um, Matthew, the bankers were beginning to, um, uh, to, to weigh and the economy was changing. But nevertheless, the power of the industrialists and the bankers to get their way by use of the crudest economic pressure, even blackmail, and against the Labour government. And the fourth item that Ben mentioned, which radicalised him, was the power of the media, which, which he said, like the power of the medieval, medieval church, ensures that events of the day are always presented from the point of view of those who, who have economic privilege. So these were observations, it seems to me, which are worth bringing back, um, not in contradiction with what you said, Matthew, but just to deepen the debate, uh, to bring this back to uh, what, 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 is, what, what is the problem? Um, he, he said, um, uh, there, there has to be a physical, uh, a human intervention, um, not just um, a program. There has to be, in, there has to be democracy, or there has to be a fight for democracy. So he said, the Ben continued on this thought, and he said, the power of people is minuscule and the power of the trade unions is minuscule compared with the, the international monetary fund or, or the banks. And so there was an incident when the IMF, 
secured cuts in our public expenditure. So these people had the power to override the whole policy even of the government. Um, the four lessons Ben said, my four lessons, led me to the conclusion that the UK is only superficially governed by MPs and the voters who elect, who elect them. Parliamentary democracy, in truth, is little more than a means of securing a periodical change in the management team, which then allows to preside, which then presides over the system, uh, what remains and, and the essence of the system remains intact. So he was making all sorts of proposals um, uh, of a democratic nature. He proposed that um, there should be more, more democracy in the Labour Party. He did not actually intervene in the Labour Party, which um, a, a bit like um, a bit like um, uh, uh, Corbyn, he did not have the, 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 the frame of mind to consider that the party was the instrument where he could, uh, he could intervene. But nevertheless, he did actually um, say that uh, the, the resolutions at conference should be binding on the party. And that was an important thing to do because he had a, the authority, which um, would be an authority which would have um, helped um, uh, us a lot if we had had um, Jeremy Corbyn saying this. And then he um, belonged to the, uh, to the Institute of Workers' Control. Uh, he um, uh, supported Sinn Féin. Uh, he saw the human factor and the need to break from unconditional loyalism and the loyalism in the Labour Party from the left and the right is in the end what subordinates us uh, to the banks and to, and to, to, be, to, to be capital, uh, just like he had said. So I would say in conclusion, I would say, um, we need uh, a propose that in the Labour Party we discuss this, that what, what Ben had shown, even with limitation, he had shown that the intervention of people, the, the actual um, uh, taking an interest and standing up physically is important as much as having programs. And that's not just the economy that decides, but it, but it is politics that decides. So the, the, the decisions are both, that one is linked to the other, and you can't make a change, for example, for nationalization without a certain mobilization from below. He visited the shipyards, uh, Tony Ben, you know, which is... Um, uh, something which was giving a lot of courage to the working class. And so I propose that um, uh, what is the, uh, the element of democratic, republican socialism in Tony Benn should be valued. And I look forward to the future discussion on Tony Benn that there will be in December. And thank you very much, Matthew. Yeah. Finished. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. Um, yes, that, that, that was interesting. I know the Republican Working Group, uh, Republican Labour Working Group of the LLA is working on uh, Tony Benn's uh, theories and stuff. So that's that's interesting. Um, okay, we have two more people have um, put their hands up. Uh, Matthew, do you want to come in now or do you want to let some other people speak first? Yeah, no, I just want to say a few things. I think there's some, some, some useful points in there. You know, by, by the comrades, obviously. Um, I think in terms of what, 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 what Tony said, I think um, obviously, you know, um, there was no, um, in terms of IS, I mean, there's no question that they had actually gained um, a huge number of, of particularly stewards. Um, you know, uh, and okay, it probably, it will vary from industry to industry and from area to area. Um, but in many places, I mean, I know, I mean, I, you know, in, in Coventry, for instance, they had stewards in virtually every major, well, virtually all the plants in, in, the, in the city. And here in Glasgow, they had, you know, um, the leadership of, of Linwood was there for, for a long time, uh, until it closed, in fact. Um, you know, the, the big Linwood car, car plant. So, I mean, it, it, and, and again, into, into um, you know, obviously the, 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 the public service unions. Um, I mean, you know, coming from a, for Cliff to come from a relatively small group you know, in, the seven, in the 60s, uh, to build something like that was, was extraordinarily, uh, based on, you know, obviously, a, as I say, this massive 
militancy of the working class. And I think you can be politically, um, obviously you should be politically uh, critical. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Tony, Tony's not alone in being expelled from, from IS. Obviously, you Cliff started expelling people. <laughs> you know, once he built this, he's built this thing, and he, and he actually invited him, famously in 1968, of course, he invited, he, he, he was thinking that, obviously, that, 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 that Powell's rivers of blood speech meant that, that there was a rise of fascism, and therefore he had to, to unite the left, so he appealed to everybody to join IS on the basis that he would allow free discussion and, and the right, you know, the traditional rights of tendency and factions and being done about it. Um, and of course, then what he did, of course, was to expel series of all the critical people, you know, one after the other, one lot after the other. So you can actually number whole whole series of organizations. I mean, there's, there's, there's God knows how many organizations have been expelled from, or can, can trace their origins to, to people who, who groups of people who are expelled by Cliff, um, you know, his various, various henchmen. Um, even his henchmen turned to use in the end. Um, as in, as in uh, uh, Brian Higgins, we were reading his book. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, I think it's, I mean, it, it, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary movement. I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I think he's right. I mean, obviously, I think Shaw, Shaw actually was, was seen as of the left in the, in the early 60s, but obviously moved very substantially. It was, was very much for the right by the time he came to the 70s. And in, in, in the 80s, I remember this massive um, movement, of course, in his seat in, in East London, uh, uh, a big slogan, you know, ditch Shaw, <laughs> as they attempted to get rid of him, uh, which is a real, one of their, one of their sort of, Crucial battles, you know, he, he, you know, um, to 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 um, deselect him out of out of his uh, out of his seat, you know, just because he was so not me. Um, I think that I mean the 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 the, the um, EEC referendum is, is is critical, as you say, you know, that was it does 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 show you this this sort of nationalism, you know, precisely that, you know, that it is nationalist and not as a, a socialist, uh, any you know. A real socialist organization would be, uh, you know, an international internationalist and looking at means of action instead of instead of building sort of notions of autarky in terms of building, you know, a, an internationalist workers' movement and collaboration of workers across different bits of, of uh, you know, of, of the world, you know, as uh, you know, based both on the working class and, of course, on the, on the developing links in terms of production and so on. And I think, Marie, I think it's interesting because, I mean, obviously. The, the, the career of Tony Benn is extraordinary. I mean, he comes from a, you know, his, his relatives are all, you know, his, certainly his male side uh, relatives who tended to be liberal MPs. Um, you know, his, his father was, was, was ennobled. Uh, he had to, uh, to um, uh, forcibly remove his own title as Viscount Stansgate. Uh, and he moved to, instead of, you know, when he was in office, as you say, he moved to the left. I mean, almost nobody else had done this. And you can look at him as as an extreme exception. Obviously, you know, in, in those terms, I mean, I think you you know you, you're right in terms of saying you know he he's questioning the nature of the system and so on. Well, not the nature of he's questioning the function of the system. I don't think he's profound enough to, to question the nature of the system itself. And he's not he's saying he's not a Marxist. But but I mean, it's very you know as a as 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 a as a as a politician. And, and some of the things he says and, and the things he does is very, is very uh, uh, interesting and useful. Um, and as you say, also, you know, in terms of the, um, you know, his his idea, you know, support of, of cooperatives. I mean, particularly, obviously, the, the Meriden cooperative, uh, where they attempted to get the Triumph motorcycles to run, you know, and, and they did, they did run it over a, over a period. You know, obviously, you know, under terrible, terrible economic conditions, and the thing eventually collapsed. But you know was a serious effort on, on, on his part. Interestingly enough, of course, in his, in his uh, he does leave this one, one sort of brick, you know, as, as, as a Minister of Energy, of course, there is a, the building, his building he had built here in the middle of Glasgow to, to, to house the British National Oil Company, uh, which of course was then sold off by Saturn, but the building is still there. So it's almost this sort of monument to Tony Benn in the middle of Glasgow. I mean, there's nothing on it to say it's a, that, that, that's the case, but that's what it is. Um, the IMF loan, I think, also is extremely, extremely important because clearly, if you examine it, actually, of course, there was no need um, to, 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 to get involved with the IMF. And then basically, they were saying, well, you know, the country, Britain's broke and we have to go to the IMF. And this is why we have to enforce all these terrible things against the working class. And it was merely, a, it was essentially a ruse 
you know, to say, well, it's not us, you know, it's not, not us that's, that, that, that's doing this, you know, um, screwing down your, your, your wages or, or cutting your public services. It's these terrible IMF guys, you know, and, 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 and we have to do this because essentially we're, we're broke and then we have to do this you know, and we don't really want to do it. Um, so, but I mean, it was in, in economic terms, there was no actual need to do it. It was, a, as I say, it was, a, it was a political ruse, um, you know, by the Labour Party, actually. And, and uh, it was another point, you know, I mean, the battle after after the fall, after the end of the government, sometimes it was very, very bitter about the conduct of that of that government, wasn't it? You know, you know it was very deep um, loathing of, ever, of all those people who'd, who'd been involved in that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, Chris was first. Could you unmute yourself? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Matthew. Uh, just to fill in one or two gaps, really. Uh, in the 60s, we had uh, what was called the Liaison Committee for the Defence of Trade Unions. I think to understand trade unions able to defeat or stop government policies such as Barbara Castle's in place of strife 68 69 that was because the trade unions uh, and when we talk about the trade unions we're not just talking about often right-wing leaderships what we're talking about is mass movements of trade union members shop stewards movements throughout many many towns and throughout many many factories so that's one of the uh, one of the important factors to understand the trade unions during the 60s and then up to the 70s what we really used uh, the term as a rank and file. Large factories we had in those days. I used to attend 6,000 in a car park in Birmingham where we used to vote with our hands. Uh, these were uh, very, very different times. I attended in Grunwick again, 76, 77, which brought the Asians uh, into the working class movement. Uh, and Grunwick is a, a very, very famous, famous dispute. Post office workers came out and refused to hand with the mail, solidarity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The alternative economic strategy, I take your point um, of its weaknesses, but we ought to see again in terms of workers' control, uh, the Ken Coates uh, under the Bertram Russell Foundation did an awful lot of work. He eventually sold out and became an MEP, but nevertheless, the workers' control during the 60s, there's a whole number of publications and it was quite a strong movement. It also was associated with the Bristol Aerospace, the swords into shares argument. And again, that uh, another offshoot from uh, the militant to uh, the militant trade union mili uh, side. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that was that's probably about it. I just uh, been reading uh, history of Lenin, and he talks to me about uh, the movement will always be in front of the party, and the party will always be in front of the leadership. And I can see that both when the Col the Corbyn era or in the sixties trade unions, the movement is actually what brings about change, not parties, not NECs not leaderships, it's actually movements. And that's what we had in the 60s. Cheers. Oh, lastly, I was on the Older Master March 1957 to 1965. Cheers. Thank you, Conrad. The problem, of course, with the movement without a party is it tends to fizzle out and doesn't lead to permanent change, but I'm, mis I'm abusing my position. Um, Steve Freeman, please. Uh, I'm just muting myself. Thank you, Tina. And thank you, Matthew, for, for that. And, and for me, it's getting us a halfway through a story, you know. So for me, the story is about the post-war social contract, if you like, the 1945, I use the term social monarchy to, to, to remind ourselves it's a constitutional monarchy with a welfare state, with a sort of state capitalism of the post-war period. Um, and that was a and so the arc of that is to go from 1945 through this butskalism where both parties supporting this system that they've established and it's incorporated in the trade union movement <clears throat> into Wilson. So Wilson is the first sign, as you said, Wilson is the first sign. He's trying to modernize this social monarchy by, as you say, the famously the white, uh, the white heat of the technological revolution, as he called it. And also don't forget his national plan as well. So there was more kind of state intervention by 
I'm not contradicting what you said, Matthew, because you already kind of said this. So I just just say that's that's the arc of it. And then what then happens, of course, is as you move into the 70s, this whole system goes into a deep crisis. And I think we need to give a little bit, probably a bit more emphasis on 1968 and what's happening in the rest of Europe, the, the democratic movements in France and in Czechoslovakia and what's happening, which you did mention, which you mentioned in uh, the Vietnam War, for example. All, all that then sets the the um, the beginning of the movement in Northern Ireland. You know, the Republican movement in Northern Ireland comes out of this, and that's a very, very important part of this story. And essentially, the Catholics in Northern Ireland were kind of complaining that they never got the 1945 social monarchy. They just had discrimination. They didn't get the benefits that that, that should have been that they should have got, like everybody else. So they were trying to de deal with their civil rights being being reduced and of course that that in itself as they went down that path they they came into conflict with the state so you had in the 1970s in this crisis you had as you said the crisis of america because america was the big prop of our social monarchy through the cold war so you have that crisis vietnam you have all the things that you mentioned and the crisis in northern ireland and of course then the work the working class the num again as you mentioned uh, all those things so I think when you get to the mid 70s with the oil crisis, you've almost got two alternative economic strategies. One alternative economic strategy was to join the common market because they realized they need to do something else. And maybe that would be the way out of the position that they were in the ruling class. I'm talking about this. And then the other alternative alternative economic strategy was the one which the Communist Party came up with and, and the left tended to support. But all they were really doing again was not doing anything particularly political. They just wanted more economic leverages in the system, more state planning, more state uh, involvement and uh, and maybe workers control, but they weren't trying to challenge the, the state uh, in, in any way. And as you say, the, the country had gone bankrupt by the mid by the mid 70s. And then you've got the International Monetary Fund coming in. So I think the the, the direction the country is going now, I think then Marie's point is very important, therefore, that the point that she brought in about the evolution of Tony Benn, because I think what Tony Benn was going on a journey towards becoming more and more of a Democrat in the in the good sense of the word. And that's why he was focusing on the points that Marie brought to attention and his evolution as a Democrat. From, you know, a more orthodox politician in, in the Wilson government to to a Democrat via his uh, campaign in the 1980s, which we're not getting onto, goes on further. So what, what Marie is saying is the beginnings, it's not really Ben being a Republican, I don't think, but it's the beginning of his different approach. And of course, when Thatcher comes in and starts to really dismantle the social monarchy with neoliberalism, Ben's politics is going to go um, even further when you get to the 90s. So I think Marie's points are very important in showing that his response is to, is to go, as you say, Matthew, to the left in a much more radical democratic direction and not simply for this sort of state capitalist uh, alternative economic strategy, which, which, which was being promoted by the Communist Party of Great Britain. A strategy which you don't really hear much of, it didn't survive, it wasn't the beginning of anything, it sort of died out with the Communist Party, I think. Maybe you think it's, maybe, maybe it's still around in some senses. So I think, yes, I think uh, that's the really important link. It's what comes next, which is Thatcher, beginning to destroy the whole thing. And I'll stop there. Thank you, Steve. Um, OK, I've got no other people with their hands up. So, Matthew, if you could come up and reply to your questions. Thank you. You're muted, comrade. OK, no, no, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's been useful because obviously we, we start getting into the point of, you know, now of, of, of people's own personal understanding of you know and, and their and political activity you know um, as opposed to what we previously had which for most people was history and now we start getting to the point where you know people actually had some involvement and um, that that lends it a great deal more um color and 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 uh, uh, perspective in those terms um you know because you're actually you know people actually know um what happened you know, because they were there, um, you know, and, it, and it's then to try and draw out the politics of that, um, you know, 
so, so in those terms, I think it's, 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 it, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to everybody who's, who's contributed. It's, it's always interesting to, 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 to listen to how, how people were, you know, what, what people were involved in now and what, what, how they think about it now. Um, I think the, the thing is, I mean, obviously you've, you've got, I mean, factors I haven't covered, you know, like, like the Ireland, like Ireland, obviously Ireland, um, very, very significant. I mean, I mean, you know, going, which again, I mean, he, he's again, you know, um, actually, uh, the 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 involvement um, of the um, in Ireland is is modelled actually on the civil rights movement in the US. You know, literally the, the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, which was actually built by the left, not not Sinn Fein. I mean, you know, Sinn Fein tend tend to tend to actually um, you know claim things um, uh, you know when, when it suits them, um, uh, like you know. The, which they weren't involved in. I mean, they, they weren't involved in Easter 1916 and they weren't involved in the Northern Ireland Civil Rights. Fortunately, there are people still, unfortunately, of course, in 1916, most of the participants were, were killed. Uh, whereas in Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, there are actually still people around, you know, who, who, who were there uh, and who have written extensively on the question. However, you know, it was directly modeled, as I say, on the on civil rights um, movement in the US. And I mean, there were many of the same, there were many of the same features of, of, of the situation, you know, in terms of, the, the, you know, systematized discrimination, gerrymandering, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and the, you know the revolt against that, um, you know, which I mean, obviously, you know, then posed some very pro profound questions in terms of, you know, the particularly in terms of the Labour Party's reaction, which actually, of course, um, you know, as as uh, as you can clearly see, you know, the, the Labour Party is always the junior partner in these things, and always, you know, is the, the, the sort of hired help when you're looking at the ruling class, and therefore, when you come to questions of repression and these key questions actually tends to be worse. Probably the record they impart in Ireland is, is, is worse than the Tories. Um, you know, certainly, well, certainly worse than Heath anyway. I mean, you know, um, Heath and, and his, his um, government attempt, actually attempted or did negotiate uh, actually to the point where they were, they were flying people out of prisons to do, get negotiate at Sunningdale in an effort to re arrive at some kind of, an, of a basis that they could actually solve the thing. I mean, obviously they couldn't do it. Whereas the, the Labour parties was just to say, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll just put the boot in, um, you know, and it, institute institute some very very savage re repression not of course not meaning in ireland because of course it, you know when it comes to these things you can't particularly something as close in ireland as, as with, the, with the strong links between the two countries you know in term, in, in, in 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 all senses particularly people uh, you know any repression in ireland cannot cannot uh, be kept um, purely in ireland and it wasn't um as we know you know and and, and in fact of course all the all the worst all the worst frame ups and so on and so forth, and the, the repression, which was deliberate. I mean, there's no question of deliberate uh, in order to repress, particularly the Irish community in Britain, um, and, and keep them quiet. Uh, we're, we're done. We're done by um, You know, so so there's no um, you know no question of that, and, and and we should always 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 remember that um, and, and draw lessons from it. I think that you know, in terms of you know um, the thing in terms of the um, the unions, as I said, I said previously. You know, the thing was that the the militancy, if you look at it, was at least as much a revolt against the union structures as it was against the the, the employers and the government, because it was because it was you know so much based in fact on 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 on, on the workplace and on on the shop stewards movement. Um, and I think okay, we can say. <coughs> I mean, the liaison committee for the defence of unions, trade unions, of course, was was again, was again a communist party organisation. It was pretty principally communist, party, communist party organisation, which I mean, was so successful in terms of the of in place of strife. But then, of course, there were there, there were other you know, other questions which came later, and it tend you know, which which raised more profound questions. Um, and so there was then you know the, the the whole sort of political questions which, which go through the unions, and I think that I mean. Uh, I think that, that that's probably another another whole whole um, uh, educational or education was to go through all that stuff. Um, I think that 
um, in the terms of, um, I mean, the, the, you know, I, I, I think now in terms, okay, they, they, in terms of the IMF, I think people did, um, you know, there was this declaration that, that okay, Britain was on its uppers and, and actually had to go to the IMF and it was, it was a great disgrace. And therefore they would have to squeeze, essentially get, get the working class to pay. Um, whereas of course, I mean, it was quite, it became, it's become clear later, if you look at all the stuff that actually, of course, that wasn't the case. They didn't need to go to the IMF. And it was actually basically a, 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 a front, you know, because then of course they could they could enact all this stuff, you know, uh, and, and, and put the put the bite on the working class and say, well, you know, it's these bad guys behind us. We need to, we need to do these things. You know, it's not us being, you know, um, we're, 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 we're not really like that. Um, whereas of course they are. <laughs> um, and and the, the question was, is as 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 uh, you know, really then is um, the impact. Of that, um, particularly the, that period of the of the, of the Wilson Callahan government, and and his um, you know, efforts to into the Labour Party immediately thereafter, because it was a huge, as I say, there was this huge thing, you know, never never again are we having that 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 type of government, um, you know, and that was the drive to to democratize both as you say both as a comrade said both democratize the Labour Party itself, you know, and say well you know no longer as you know as Ben quite clearly point out you know that it's not things are not shouldn't be in the gift of the Labour Party the leader of the Labour Party they should be in you know uh, uh, accountable there should be accountability well, still not accountability in the Labour Party um, you know there should be accountability there should be democracy and things should be decided you know. And the, the, the leader of the Labour Party shouldn't be elected purely by MPs, you know, and that that was the was the first thing was to say, okay, you know, that the, the leader of the Labour Party was going to be elected by by this this elect the Electoral College, which then lasted, you know, which was this split thing between the, the members of the MPs and the and the trade unions. So there were these there were these changes, which came directly out of this stuff, um, you know, and it and and and, and I think also you know in terms of you know um, the, if you like, the evolution of a, of, a, of the left in Britain and the and the, the, the organisation of the left, because that itself also was important. And I think that um, not merely in Britain, because actually what happened, of course, is you got a series of organisations that came out and all this stuff, particularly from the sixties and seventies, who then built their own international networks and organizations and so on and so forth and had an effect all over the all over the world to to probably to to more of an extent than than, than most countries you know um if you look at it you know and all of those all of those organizations you know whether that was um you know jerry Healy's um international committee or or, or is and then the to be and they're they're coasting because you know in, 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 in all sections or the militant building they're 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 you know network which extended you know across much of the world and all of these things you know and in those terms you know that what comes out of this then has an effect on 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 on, on, on uh, you know across the world you know because i think i mean in those terms and for me i mean what i think is that because the, the, the precisely as we've as we've been through in terms of the, of the of the past is that the Communist Party never had a real domination in in Britain. It was far, you know, the Britain was far more open, and therefore you had on the possibility of alternative an alternative. Uh, you know, when you had these new left forces being built, you know, from the militancy. I mean, not not you know that, that it wasn't a question of these, these things were being sucked out of somebody's head. Or, or, or their thumb or whatever else. It was actually based on the fact that the, work, the working class itself was organizing and, 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 and were militant against both you know, the state, the employer and so on and so forth. And that gave the base for, for, for the building of these left organizations. You know. uh, and it is precisely, I think, that as comrades have said, the, 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 the contrast between that you know, and, and this mass, mass militant uh, working class versus the, the situation we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, running up to, to, to Corbyn, in which, the, uh, and even to this to the present, where the working class is not um, to that degree, or, and, it, and is not in conflict. Certainly not even even uh, by by relation to to even the U.S. working class now. You know, the way U.S. working class is that you've got this rolling strike wave, which has been running for for two years. You know. There have been, um, you know, approaching 2,000 strikes 
in in the last in in the last two years in the US. Um, you know, there's nothing like that here yet. You know, I think it will come, but but you can see, and I think that that that's the that's a real difference between what what was going on you know, in in society and then into the Labour Party then, and what 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 happens now. Um, so, but we can draw that out anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, Steve's got his hand up, but I'm not sure if that's a legacy hand or did you want to say something? Legacy hand, I think. <laughs> no, no, it's not a legacy hand. Oh, it's Steve. not a legacy hand. Okay, no. come in then. Yeah, well, I was it. only going to say if other comrades who haven't spoken want to speak, I'm happy to stand down, but I just thought we, the discussion could go on. There was, there was one point I did want to make, but it did. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, assu I'm assuming that we've for the, for the purpose of this argument, we're kind of stopping in 1979 in terms of the story. That seems to be about where we are because the next stage goes on. But I, I wanted to make this point really that the, the, the 1945 social monarchy is, hasn't ended yet. You know, we've still got the Queen, we've still got the NHS, we've still got the BBC. But what we've really got now is we've got something which is fractured, broken, degenerated in a, in a terrible sort of state. And if you even look at Brexit, when you see that in, um, in 2016, Northern Ireland votes to remain in the European Union and Scotland votes to remain in the European Union. So there's a complete fracture right across the state. Now, what, where we are today, this is, a slow, this is a slow car crash from the 1970s, by the way, because if we go back to the 1970s, we've mentioned Ireland. I forgot to mention Scotland, Matthew. That was a real point I'm coming back to. So it's worth remembering that. In 1979, Scotland was given the chance of devolution by the Callaghan government. It was a kind of last political thing that they did. And Scotland voted that it wanted home or, or a, a, a dissolved assembly. But the Labour Party unionists put in a rule called the 40% rule that meant um, that even though there was a majority, it wasn't going to count. And so the thing that actually happened was that Thatcher and these Labour unionists combined to wreck Callaghan's bill and precipitate, directly precipitate, the 1979 general election. And we know what happened in the 1979 general election, Thatcher won it. So in a way, the this, this Scottish question was making its appearance on the scene in the late 1970s. Um, and it was in the end, the Labour Party could no more deal with Scotland than it could deal with Ireland. They, they failed on all of those points. And, and Ben was right by thinking that democracy is the answer to all this. And if the Labour left and the Labour Party doesn't deal with democratic questions, we are absolutely... Uh, up the creek without a paddle, I would say, and I think we're still up the creek without a paddle right now, you know, in a certain sense. So in that sense, we have to listen to what Tony, where Tony Ben went next, as Marie said, he goes down to say, you know what, we actually need in the 1990s to have a republic. We need to make a democratic break with this broken, fractured system, which is not democratic and, it, 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 you know, it's not, not democratic. I, I just, just to finish on this point, Ken Clark says today, in the European, and he's a Tory, by the way, and he says we've now got an, uh, we've now got our un unelected dictatorship or elected dictatorship is now actually happening. We're in a, it, we're, a system has gone so bad that we're virtually in a dictatorship, and that's from a Tory. So if he can say that, we can say something a bit more radical than that. I'm sure. Finish there. Thank you, Steve. Um, Matthew, did you want to come back, or are we? Yeah, I'm not. Obviously, we're we're onto uh, onto different things. In in, in I mean, I remember the Scottish referendum um, of of '79. Um, <coughs> and I mean, the thing is, I mean, for for a start, I mean, what, what what it was driven out of actually was a split in the Labour Party in Scotland. You know, because I mean, there were there were, sort of, there were quite a lot, you know, quite a number of people, of course, in the Labour Party who were in favour of of, 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 of devolution and, and who wanted it. And they, you know. <coughs> Far more so than than than, than um, you know the SNP, uh, who at the time, of course, were quite a marginal force, and the SNP, of course, uh, were based um, uh, essentially uh, based in the northeast corner of uh, you know up, up, up in Aberdeenshire, um, and uh, you know were uh, consisted of a bunch of discontented Tories, um, you know. So in those terms, it was it was quite a different landscape, but obviously, you know, as you said. I mean, really, it, 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 it comes down to the, um, uh, I mean, more or less, the, the 
as the system itself breaks down, it, it, it starts falling apart. You know, because obviously the you know the, the uh, um, you know the centripetal forces start start blowing things apart. You know, because obviously um, you know what if you have a have an imperialist or a successful imperialist country, then ever actually everybody wants to be part of it. Um, you know. In many cases, and of course, uh, you know, once the whole bloody thing starts degenerating, obviously people, people think they can do better outside, um, which is a bit of an illusion, really. <laughs> um, I think that in terms of um, you know the, the the position of 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 Ben and so on, I think I mean I think it's you know really it's far more for me it's far more class based. And I think it's it's much more. I mean, as, as you can see, because it, it it becomes much clearer in the seventies. I mean, you can see it quite clearly. I mean, there is there is this absolute warfare, um, and it and it becomes absolutely stark. And you know, it, in the minor strife, only four or five, which is warfare. I mean, just just pure warfare. You know, and and it opens all that stuff up. Um, you know, uh, uh, but you know, you can see. I um, mean, the whole basis of you know what once you had. You know, hundreds of thousands of people on strike, uh, and and the position in which I mean, the, 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 you know, in in certainly in the likes of the of the early seventies against Heath, I mean, they were really struggling to make sure the thing didn't get get out of control, and it wasn't just in the say it wasn't just a question of you know um, the control of the of the state of of, of the of the, the bosses or the control of the purely the land right, but actually the control of the unions as well. You know, um, and well, when you came to things like you know the whole question of you know the the, the, the Pentonville Five and so on, and and, and then the miners the miners strikes, particularly seventy two, you know, would you know what would there be, you know certainly you know there was you know in the in the Pentonville in the case of Pentonville Five, I mean there was a real question of you know of a, of a general strike. Uh, to get these guys out of jail, so they got them out double quick on their own. But so, uh, in '72 again, I mean, the, 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 the key question was okay, you know, they, I mean, uh, at Saltley Gate, I mean, okay, you say, well, you know, it was a question, of, okay, there was all these guys marching into Saltley Gate from, from, but there was also the wider political question, you know, okay, what happens if 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 you get, you know. This substantial section, the leading leading section of the, of, of the working class in Birmingham, turns around and said, "Right, okay, we're in support of the miners, you know, and we're prepared to take action in support of the miners to get, you know, to, to, to bring actually bring them." I mean, that that's pretty profound, quite, that, that, you know, because really, sort of gate marks marks the the, the, the the is 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 near lethal to, to to heat. I mean, it certainly it cr cripples him beyond brown pair. Uh, the, 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 that defeat, you know, at the hands of, at the hands of the workers. I mean, that, those are profound questions. Um, and, and so, you know, <coughs> Senate course, I mean, okay, you know, you're then looking at, right, okay, what actually then is the role of the Labour Party, and particularly that, that government um, of, of Wilson and then Callaghan, but also, of course, the leadership. And, and to me, I mean, you know, this is the, this is the core question, actually. Under those questions, under that those conditions, for for for, for Arthur Scargill to say we don't care who's in government, uh, but we just want money. I mean, that's a profound abdication uh, of of uh, and and you know something that that will oh, you know you're going to it's going to come back and bite you very severely as you would expect. I mean, you can't you can't challenge this. The, the, that, System in that in that form, unless you know you're prepared to carry through. If you're not prepared to carry through, then then they will come around and destroy it. Um, and you know, the, the, they're almost obliged to do that. <laughs> you know, they're not called a really class for nothing. Um, you know. So yes, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew. Very interesting discussion today. That was really useful. Thank you, comrade. Um, please join us next week where we're talking about the struggle in Liverpool in the 1980s and the main speaker is going to be Mike Hogan. Thank you comrades. Good night. Bye bye.